Good morning, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever in the world you may be. This is another edition of the International Worship Fellowship coming live with you on this morning, the first broadcast of the new year, uh, January the 2nd, um, not January 2nd, January 3rd, 2021. Another, this is another day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Um, we have a guest today all the way from, um, what's the name of that place in Michigan? Uh, um, not Three Rivers. Um, I call it the Kellogg City. What's your name of your town again, Bishop? Johnson? Kalamazoo. Kalamazoo. Battle Creek. Battle Creek, right. Battle okay, Creek, Michigan. Uh, but he is our bishop over first jurisdiction of Columbia. Bishop Lester L.E. Johnson is our guest on today, um, a man who basically re single-handedly rebuilt uh, and built up or rebuilt up the uh, Church of God in Christ in Cleo to Dios in Cristo in Colombia. He's our guest this morning. We have Elder Hicks, and we don't know who all might be popping in. I was kind of late this morning in getting the, um, the announcement out, but uh, we see who pops in throughout the day. Elder Hicks, you want to start us off with prayer. Lord, we thank you and we praise and we magnify your name. Edify us today through your word. Give us understanding at, that we might impact the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Amen. Amen. Well, Bishop Johnson, you know, I know you have a short time this morning, so you can give us a little bit about yourself as I start while well, I share this um, broadcast and on the link out. So you can start giving us a little bit about yourself and what you're doing, what they're doing in Columbia, then give us a little word <laughs> on this morning. But I want to say this man has been a great friend of mine, a great supporter of mine. He has not let a title go to his head. He's still the same person that he was before. And he actually does the work of a bishop. Um, he, do he does the work. And I can, I can say about this about this young man. He does the work in, in, in Columbia, not just in Columbia, but in the other countries as well in South America. He just has to get to Africa next. <laughs> Amen. Without further ado, Bishop Johnson, go ahead and take us the rest of the way in Yahshua's name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me, bless his whole. Lead name for he has done great things for he has done great things for he has done great things. Bless his holy name, for he has done great things for he has done great things for he has done great things bless his the name and I will bless the Lord oh my soul and all that is within me bless his holy name. I'm 
so happy to be with you all on this bright and early morning. And this is the first Sunday of the year of 2021. I would like to say I'm most grateful to our Heavenly Father, Jesus Christ, who has allowed us to enter into the year of 2021. It is by his grace and by his mercy that he has allowed us. It's no goodness of our own. Even when we have been perfect in all of our ways, as we deem so, our righteousness is as filthy rags. And it is God's mercy, hallelujah, that has allowed us to continue on. And God has graced us to be able to enter into another season of ministry for the kingdom. For me and for the people of God, I really believe it's about advancing the kingdom of our Lord Jesus Christ. And when God allows us to see another year, another day, another moment, another hour, it's because he has something in his mind for us to do. And so I'm grateful that God has given me a little more of an assignment mm -hmm. in this season, praise God. And I'm grateful to the one and only Elder Kaisel, who is shepherding and pastoring this international mm -hmm. worship uh, fellowship and has given me the opportunity to share and we honor him on this morning and we honor the elder Hicks who has God joined us well. And to all of you, my father's children, wherever you are on this earth, whether it's in Europe, somewhere in a country in Europe or a country in Asia or a country in Africa or a country in Central or South America, we honor you wherever you are. The Lord gave me a word and I would like to share it with you as we go into this next season. Just for a uh, few moments. And we find ourselves repetitively in the second book of the second chapter of the book of Colossians. And the Lord gave me this word actually last November, and, um, or shall I say the November before last. And uh, I began to preach it and I've been preaching it every time God has given me opportunity to do so. And I want to share with the saints here on this international worship and fellowship. Paul starts in verse number one by saying, for I would that ye knew what great conflict I have for you. And for them at Laodicea, and for as many as have not seen my face in the flesh, that their hearts might be comforted, be knit together in love, and unto all riches of the full assurance of understanding to the acknowledgement of the mystery of God and of the Father and of Christ, in whom are hid all the treasures and of wisdom and of knowledge. In Christ, you know, we have a lot of science going on in our world today. We have a lot of people aspiring <laughs> to wisdom, aspiring to know knowledge, aspiring to craft and develop and to um, sharpen philosophy. But we here see in the scriptures that in Christ Jesus is hit all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. And so as we as believers continue to seek after the more of God, we must remember that we have the secret. We have the secret weapon and that is Christ Jesus. Yes. We remember now in the word of God where it says in John, the first chapter, that in the beginning was the word. The word was with God. And the word was God. In right. Yes, it was. The word. the word was with God. And the word was God. That word became what? Flesh. Flesh. And that word dwelt among us and we beheld his glory, even the only begotten of the father. 
So in Christ, which is the word, is hidden all of the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. As we are seeking to go further into uh, what we will hope to be post-COVID-19, mm -hmm. of an assurity that if we find ourselves lost in Christ, we will find ourselves in the middle of the wisdom, in the middle of the knowledge that will get us to where we are, to where we need to be. The Bible says, study to show thyself approved. And we take that to mean that the Lord blesses us as we advance ourselves in our schooling. And so it is a blessing and a privilege to be able to go to school. And we admonish one another to go to the best universities and colleges around the world. But I'm reminded this morning of a saying by my late bishop, the Bishop Fred L. Cunningham, don't lose your burning with your learning. Don't lose your burning in the Holy Ghost with your learning that you lose in school. In other words, your learning does not replace your burning, your desire for the sincere word of God. Why is that? Because the education that you receive, even in the best universities and college, is only a stepping stone. What does the scripture say? The scripture says in 2 Timothy chapter number 3, what does the scripture say about the word of God? Well, 2 Timothy, quick enough. Chapter number three, verse number 16. Uh -huh. Number 15. Uh -huh. From a child, thou hast known the scriptures. Okay, praise God. Mm -hmm. the scripture, uh, said that Paul admonished Timothy, disturbed the gift because it was in him. It came from his grandmother, came from his mother, Lois, amen, and Eunice, praise God. He was known the scriptures from that of he was a child. But this is the imperative part of the verse. This is the operative phrase. He said, you know the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. The scriptures are able to make you wise. Yes. So it's just not about knowing Jesus, and that's most important. But it is the scriptures that are able to make you wise. So seek understanding, seek knowledge, but seek the word because it is the word which is able to make you wise. And we have to be in the spirit. We have to be connected through the Holy Spirit. Yes. Let's go to Daniel. Daniel, which is known to be one of the major prophets in the scriptures. Let's go to the book of Daniel. It's important to be in the word, but it's also important, equally important to be in the Holy Spirit. The mm -hmm. scripture says that the letter killeth, but the spirit giveth life. However, Jesus said, not one tittle, not one, 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 one vow, one syllable of this word shall pass away. And Jesus said that I didn't come to destroy the word, but I came to what? Fulfill it. I didn't come yes, to did. destroy the law. I came to fulfill the law. And not one word of this law will be gone away. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall what? Never, Never. pass, pass Never. away. And so what is the scriptures trying to tell us? It's a balance between the scriptures, the written word, and the spirit. The spirit without, excuse me, the word without the spirit will kill us because the things of God must be what? Spiritually discerned. You cannot read the word of God and use a carnal eye. You cannot use the lens that you build in your academia, in the university to read the, and, and, and interpret the word of God. You have to read the scriptures and interpret it through the lens of the Holy Ghost because without such, you inherit death. 
But if you, through the lens of the Holy Spirit, read and discern and understand the word of God, you shall receive life. For the scripture says, Jesus said in John chapter 6, verse 63, that the spirit, the words that I speak, they are what? Spirit and they are life. And it is in Jesus Christ that we live, we move, and we have our being. And so as we go to Daniel chapter number nine, Daniel chapter number nine, right at it. we read in that, uh, let's just read verse 20, 21 and 22. And while I was speaking and praying and confessing my sin and the sin of my people Israel, and presenting my supplication before the Lord, my God, for the holy mountain of my God. Sisters and brothers, when you pray, you can't just pray for yourself. You got to pray for the world. You got to pray for your community. Listen, it is the saints. It is the saints that are standing in the gap. It don't, don't, don't get it twisted. It's not the vaccine that's going to stop this plague. It is the prayers of okay. the saints. And that's why we got to humble ourselves, turn from our wicked ways, seek him. Then he will hear from heaven. And so God is using us as international intercessors. When we connect ourselves, when we connect in prayer, we cover the earth. And repentance is necessary. Sometimes people don't know they need to repent. So you got to be like Job and, re and repent for your children and your neighborhood and your community. Praise the name of the Lord. And so here, Daniel gives us the example of how we pray, how we present our supplication. Verse 21. Yay. Whilst I was speaking in prayer, speaking in prayer, while he was speaking in prayer, even the man Gabriel, whom I had seen in the vision at the beginning, being caused to fly swiftly, touched me praise God, mm. about the time of the evening oblation. And he informed me and talked with me and said, oh, Daniel, I am now come forth to give thee skill and understanding. So while Daniel was in prayer, while Daniel was in the spirit, the angel of the Lord came and touched him. And when he came and touched him and spoke to him, he said, I am now come forth to give thee skill and understanding. When we go forth in prayer, when we turn to the spirit of the Lord, it is the spirit of God and his most holy angels that will come forth and give us skill and understanding. So when we read the word of God, through the lens of the spirit. And when we connect to the spirit realm, it is the spirit of God through his angelic forces that will give us the skill and the understanding to know what to do so that we may be like the children of Issachar, whom the scripture says knew how to discern the times. We need to know what to do and when to do it and why God is leading us to do it so that we may go forth with what? Skill and understanding. But it will only come through the power of the Holy Ghost. Yes. So we find ourselves back in the book of Colossians. See, we remember Daniel, he was in captivity too. It was, wasn't his sisters and brothers, but Daniel and the Bible said the Shadrach, Meshach and the Benigo, he they were all in captivity with their sisters and brothers. Whether they were guilty alone or not, they were all into captivity. Yes. But like Paul here in Colossians, he said, I'm not in captivity. I'm not suffering for myself, but I'm suffering for those in Laodicea. And I am suffering for those that are far off. Many is that have not seen my face, that their hearts may be comforted, being knit together in love unto all riches of their full assurance of their understanding. In other words, Paul said, I'm going through so that you may know Jesus. Mm hmm. And see, that's what God has been ministering to us throughout this whole year. We're going through, but it's not about us. We're going through because our sacrifice 
our suffering has drawn us closer to God. It has humbled us to the extent that we have sought the more of God. And as we are seeking God, God has given us revelation and, and, and apostolic anointing and divine strength so that we may go into the world and advance his kingdom. What we are going through, it's not about us. When we have lived for God all that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. It wasn't yes. about God. It was about us. God gave his only son, but the only son gave his life. life. It wasn't about Jesus. It was about us. And if we are not partakers in his sufferings, we won't be partakers in that what most heavenly gift. So it's not about us. It's about what God is trying to do in the earth. And when you give God your yes, yes, when you submit to the will of the Father, then you come forth with these sufferings. But with great suffering comes great blessings. Yes. With great affliction comes great power. Let's read just a couple of more verses and I'll be out of your way for today. John chapter 17 John chapter 17 and verse 21 says that he said, neither I hear again. Jesus is doing just like Daniel and to some extent. Verse 20 says, neither I pray for these alone, but for them also, which shall believe on me through their word. Yes. Us. He, he's not just Jesus saying I'm going to the cross, but now it's not even about me. I'm praying for them that they may be one as thou father art in me and I am in thee that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that, they, that thou hast sent me. It's not about us. It wasn't about Christ. It was about those that will believe on Christ because of our testimony. So Paul was serving for them in Colossus, for them in Laodicea, and for them that were afar off, for them that they didn't even see what you're going through today, your testimony, your revelation that you get through your affliction, it will be so that those that come after us would receive the engrafted word of God and be a partakers of this great salvation. You see the same sort of thing in Acts chapter 2 and verse number 39. Acts 2 verse 39, for the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Listen, there are people that are going to get saved from your testimony that you never knew, that will never know your name, but you're going through for the kingdom's sake. One last verse, I believe, I believe, I believe is in Exodus. Please let it be in Exodus chapter number four. I didn't happen to write this verse down. Exodus chapter 12, verse number 37. Here the children of Israel are leaving Egypt after 400 years of bondage. And verse number 37 says, and the children of Israel journey from Ramesses to Sukkot, about 600,000 on foot that were men besides children. And a mixed multitude mm -hmm. went up also with them and flocks and herds, even very much cattle. See, the children of Israel, it just wasn't them. But the scripture says a mixed multitude. Amen. The right Other shot people were blessed because of the children of Israel. Other people received deliverance when the you're not when the children of Israel received their deliverance. You're not just going through for yourself. When God brings you out, everything that is attached to you is coming out. It's not about you. 
It's about what God has desired and then and, 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 and proclaimed and determined to do through you. So I will leave you with this, verse number six. As therefore ye have received Christ Jesus, so walk ye in him. Amen. Thank you for that word. Amen. Thank you for the word and the wisdom that we have in studying the word. And that's so important. And I'm um, going back to even with the young people. You know, we got a lot of young people who know the word of God, but we got to get them to love the word of God. They, they, they like um, Timothy, they knew the word from the youth up. But we got to get the word in them and not just knowing them. Amen. Thank you for that message on um, Bishop. You know, I just gave me, I just got a couple of messages even out of your message. Um, I yes. think I'm going to preach about the mixed multitude. Uh, follow the blessings. <laughs> you know, the, the Rachel Bites was one of those people. I mean, you don't preach about the Rachel Bites. As a matter of fact, I think I'm the only one that ever preached about him. <laughs> but when Jehu pretended like he wanted it to be for Israel and destroyed the prophets of Baal, he just took the Rachel Bites. He didn't take none of the other Jews. He took the Rachel Bites with him. <laughs> Say, look, look, look at me destroy these um idol gods. Come with me to destroy the, the people who are worshiping Baal. Amen. But thank God for them. Thank God for that message on this morning. This is Bishop Johnson's first time with us. I've been trying to get him ever since I started this, but I thank God he found time on this morning. And this is something I started when nobody was in church and just to get the people from around the world to come together and have fellowship and people are slowly going back into their churches now. So there's not as many people coming on as it used to be. So I decided to do this on YouTube instead of Facebook live. So when they get back from church, they can still catch it. <laughs> Amen. Yes. Um, but we've had people from Columbia, Costco used to be with us in the beginning. Um, Columbia, um, Peru, um, Nigeria, Kenya, Uganda, South Africa, Zimbabwe, New Zealand, New Zealand, New Zealand, yeah, New Zealand. He wants to join us. He wants to join the Church of God in Christ too. So we've had people from all over the world come on through this, and Elder Hicks has been with us from the beginning. Uh, just want to tell us real briefly what's going on in Colombia and how we can help, how people can help bless the work in Colombia real quick before I take the YouTube part off. Yes, yes. So um, the Lord has blessed us in our ministry in Colombia. We have, in, in the middle of the pandemic, the Lord has allowed us to build a church in the Piapoco region of Colombia. I believe you've been to Piapoco. Um, yes. And um, now so we start to take our showers. <laughs> <laughs> now we are um, on our way and we're building a church in Timbuktu, which is on the other side of the country in the jungle. And um, our goal is to finish that church um, by March. And we're almost there, we're about $4,000 short. So if you want to- I mean, How many thousands? 4,000. Uh, okay. We raised about 6,000 so far. And so um, our goal is 10,000 we're almost there. And so um, if you want to sow into this seed, uh, sow a seed, um, it's, uh, you can reach me at 269-447-1357. You can also text me on that number as well, 269-447-1357. Uh, we built one church in 2020 and uh, we wanna build three churches in uh, 2021. And so we'll have this church built hopefully by March, Lord willing. And we'll see what the Lord will do by December of 2021. But that is our vision. And if the Lord allows us to go back, we'll be doing much ministry. We focus much on children's ministry, as well as women's ministry and church leadership. So join us. Amen. Now, Elder Hicks has told me that when I go back, he wants to come down there with me. So we're going to be going back there together. <laughs> All right. Well, we're going to get back. Hey, man. So let me get ready to end the YouTube portion of this. So I thank God for everybody who's seen this video as you may come on in. And don't forget to subscribe. I don't know why people tell people to subscribe to the channel, but it might be a blessing too. So subscribe to the channel wherever you may be watching. God bless and, and, and enjoy.